Do you ever wonder what sets the professional day traders apart from the rest? It's not a secret strategy or an exact set of rules. It's the little things that make a big difference in trading. Today I'm sharing a couple of those trading rules and observations that helped me become more consistent. So here's a scenario. You monitor a market and price is trading very close to a key supply area. But no matter how many times it seems close to break, it just wouldn't do it. Each time it hits that point and turns back down. What's your game plan? What's likely to happen next? A breakout or a rejection? After testing that level one more time, it finally went through. Well, from my experience, each time price tests the supply or demand area, it weakens that level. You can feel the tension building with each attempted breakout. And as soon as it breaks past that resistance point, price will most likely start to rise faster. It turns out, the more a price level, a supply, a demand, a support or resistance gets challenged at a certain price without breaking through, the more tense that battle becomes. It's like a rubber band being stretched to its limit. The price tends to shoot up pretty quick once that resistance is shattered. So the lesson is simple. Whenever you see a level getting tested over and over, chances are very good it's about to bust on through. And when it does, the movement could be significant. So look for areas with multiple rejections, with multiple price tests. Mark those areas because that's where potential breakouts are likely to follow. When you watch the price action day after day, you start to get a feel for how different markets move. Sometimes you'll see instances where price drops a bit after making a high, but doesn't go all the way back down to the previous low. And then the next high is even higher. You know the pattern. That's what we call higher lows. It basically means the price is building strength even though it's pulling back a little. Each time it falls, it bounces up from a higher point than the last drop. Now this is a really good sign, because it shows there's support building up even on smaller dips. Momentum is on the rise. When you see this kind of price action around supply areas, you need to be ready to trade a breakout. This supply area or resistance is where sellers tend to step in and push the price down. Look here, higher lows into a supply area. All those steady recovery attempts were building power underneath even if the big breakout still hasn't landed. And sure enough, a few candles later, breakout. So anytime you see that price makes higher lows into supply or resistance, even if it pulls back short term, pay close attention. Higher lows means strength is building below the surface. It's only a matter of time before that area is cleared. But if the price is making higher lows, even as it's struggling against supply, that tells me the buyers are getting stronger. It means that supply area may not hold for long. In this case, I will always favor long positions. On the other hand, lower highs into demand is also a red flag. The buyers can't hold their strength to challenge the area properly. So the next drop could be a big one. So we all know how crazy markets can get sometimes. One day the market is swinging wildly, printing huge candlesticks outside its normal daily range. Well, there's actually a pattern to expect after one of those whipsaw sessions. When the market really gets moving in a big way, blowing through its average true range for the day, it's usually followed by some consolidation. Think about it. That kind of activity is unsustainable. It takes a lot of energy to push the market that far, and it needs time to settle down after all that volatility. Traders are digesting those big moves, finding new levels of support and resistance. That heavy selling and buying leaves its marks. The institutional traders are repositioning after covering or establishing new positions during that big move. All that activity lays the ground for a calmer period. So when you see a day with extreme volatility compared to normal, take it as a sign the market needs a break. Don't be surprised if the following day features tighter ranges and indecision as price stabilizes at new levels. It's the natural balance 
after an imbalance. This is an important pattern because it gives you a heads up on what to expect after one of those whipsaw sessions. You can position yourself accordingly for the consolidation rather than panicking at the relative lack of movement. Now let's talk about drawing the right levels on your charts. Forget about drawing every possible line. You'll just confuse yourself. Simplicity is key here. Don't clutter your charts with unnecessary lines that will only confuse you. Instead, focus on the crucial ones that provide valuable insights. These are the ones that actually matter, levels that are also being monitored by the big players. First, supply and demand zones. These are the wider areas that show where buying or selling dominated the other side. Round numbers. These are the whole numbers and percentages that markets tend to pose at psychologically. Watch for 50, 100 levels, for example. Then popular moving averages. The 20, the 50, 100 and 200 period moving averages are mainstream filters institutions use. See how price reacts around these averages. Then central pivots. Calculated from the high, low and close, these daily, weekly and monthly levels also get institutional eyeballs. They provide solid structure, so don't neglect them. Then we have the weekly and the monthly highs and lows. These are significant barriers, often formed at extremes of past sessions. We also have yesterday's high and low. These are your closest nearby support or resistance, still fresh in traders' memories. These provide near-term context. So focus on these core levels and ignore the rest. Trust that major market players are watching the same areas as guidelines. Your analysis will be much cleaner by filtering out less important indicators. And here's a helpful method for improving your trading strategy. First, get 10 screenshots showing ideal entries that made you money in the past. Could be even from a demo account, but preferably from live trades. Write notes for each screenshot, highlighting what you liked, the setup, the signals, the charts looked right. Get specific. Then create a list of all the common factors showing in the winning trades, like indicators aligned, candles formed, patterns, supply or demand areas, whatever your strategy is based on. Then compile the notes and you've just created a simple checklist or rules page that clearly defines your strategy's requirements. Print the checklist and use it each session. Only take trades that perfectly match the rules you've backtested. This process forces you to truly define your edge in a tangible way. Instead of loose concepts, you now have solid requirements to refer to under pressure. Over time, it will help you refine your strategy by highlighting weakness for improvement. And most importantly, it gives you confidence to stick to your plan rather than chasing every setup. It's really that simple. Follow the rules that history showed it worked. Defining your strategy is one of the best things you can do as a trader. This one is so obvious, but a lot of traders get it wrong. Choosing the right time frame that suits you is one of the most important aspects. We are all different. Some people like making lots of quick trades. Others prefer a more relaxed style. And the time frame you pick will totally change how you trade. Also, think about it. Changing your time frame changes other variables in your trading. How many trades do you get per week? How long do you wait for trades? How long do you stay in your trades? If you're someone who likes lots of action, you'll go with a shorter time frame. You'll get tons of trading opportunities every single day, but it also means you gotta be glued to your screen to watch for changes and close your trades fast, so it can be stressful keeping up. On the other hand, if you prefer a more chill style, you go daily, way less trades, but more time between them. You won't be staring at the charts 24 seven, waiting for the next signal. The downside is you sometimes have to sit on your trades for a long time. Again, not for everyone. Finding what works for your personality is key. Are you an action junkie or a laid back trader? Once you know that, 
everything else like how many trades to expect and how long they last will fall into place. When I first started out years ago, I had big dreams of scoring huge wins left, right and center. I wanted to be right in 9 times out of 10 and make 10 times as much on my winning trades. Well, that kind of trading is almost impossible to achieve consistently in the real world. The thing is, markets are unpredictable and there's always an element of risk involved, no matter how skilled you are. Even for pros, having a 90% win rate is rare. All you really need is a simple 50-50 win-loss ratio, with the profits being twice the size of your losses on average. I know, it doesn't sound as exciting as hitting a home run every day, but with a 2 to 1 risk reward, if you stick to it and trade smart, the profits will add up over time. So many traders make the game way harder than it needs to be by chasing unrealistic odds and profit targets. But the truth is, you really need a small statistical edge that tips the scale slightly in your favor over hundreds of trades. And I don't blame you. You watch YouTubers flashing their cars and houses and you're inspired. And you go for these huge, unsustainable winning percentages and profits that even few pros can achieve. I'm telling you, a 50% win rate paired with a simple 2 to 1 risk to reward can be very lucrative over the long run. Yet, the emotional side of us dreams of 10x, 20x profit targets and a 90% win rate. The facts show it's very rare to consistently win 9 out of 10 trades, much less to turn small accounts into life-changing profits. If you're in your first years and you're not profitable yet, it would be so much better of accepting modest achievable targets, managing risk and sticking to high probability strategies with an emphasis on preserving capital. Let the compounded gains do their work over time rather than chasing huge wins. And a small reminder, the markets are not your enemy. I know when things don't go your way in a trade, it's easy to get frustrated and imagine the market is out to get you. Those evil, greedy smart money are chasing your stops. No, it's not that way. You have to change this mindset. Trading is not a war, it's an opportunity to learn and make some money on the side. When I was starting out, I'd also got angry at the stupid market whenever I took a loss. Over time, I realized that the market doesn't have feelings or intentions. It just moves up and down based on supply and demand, like everything else in life. It's not picking on you personally when a trade goes against you. Rather than use negative terms like the market screwed me or talk about beating the market, I'd encourage you guys to see it as an endless possibility. Every new day brings a fresh chance to catch a move. Even in ranging markets, you can find ways to profit little by little. The more you view it as a learning process rather than war, the more opportunities you'll see develop over time. So next time you feel frustrated, think about what you can learn from the experience. That's the mindset that will take your trading to the next level. And here's when trading will become a lot easier. When you'll find the perfect balance between anticipation and confirmation in your strategy. Imagine you're about to make a trade. You have this gut feeling, a hunch about how the market is going to move. That's anticipation. It's like a little voice inside your head saying, hey, this might go up. But anticipation alone is not enough. You need confirmation. The evidence to support your gut feeling. It's like doing your homework before a big test. You collect data, analyze charts, and look for patterns. This way, you can make sure your hunch is not just a lucky guess, but based on solid facts. When you combine anticipation and confirmation in your own trading strategy, instead of predicting, you're staking up the odds in your favor 